Welcome to The Peak, where becoming your best self is our goal. I'm Ashley Russo. On today's show, supporting our veterans, inclusive bikes for kids of all abilities, and a look at our beautiful Lehigh Valley. All that and more, this is The Peak. Let's take an inside look at the production process with the ASR Media team. Hey everyone, it's KP, the associate producer at ASR Media Productions, and I'm here to talk about how vital producers are and how we create our videos. Our team is a little different because we have multiple producers who specialize in different areas. This is what makes ASR special because we are able to give each of our clients the time and attention they deserve when creating content with us. Although we wear many hats, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the process it takes to be a producer at ASR Media Productions. It's important for every one of our projects to have a detailed plan from start to finish. We take our client's ideas and put them into writing for everyone to approve and then create production notes. These are details about the goals, deliverables, and uses for each video we'll be creating. Producers also navigate how to bring the client's vision to life in the most efficient way possible while never missing a detail. We plan out all of the filming, attend every shoot, to make sure that we're capturing exactly what we need to in order to deliver the video. Producers play a crucial role in delivering the best video possible to our clients. We are there during pre-production, filming, post-production, and we work directly with our clients throughout the entire process. Although it takes our whole team to do what we do, it's the producers that guide each project to the finish line. As producers, we are here to partner with our clients. If you wanna learn more about what we do and how we help, Go check out our blog post. So grateful for the amazing production team that helps put this show together. Coming up next, how our furry friends are helping veterans in need. I served five years in the Marine Corps. I wanted to serve my country. At the time, there was the war going on and uh, I wanted to be of service. I chose the Marine Corps because it was the toughest. They got the best uniforms. <laughs> and uh, basically, I just, yeah, I just wanted to serve. I went to uh, Camp uh, Fallujah, Iraq, and I was there for eight months. And then uh, got back from that. Six months later, I did another tour. We went to Afghanistan. When I got out of the service, PTSD just kind of took over my life. And uh, it, was, it was rough. I was lost, I didn't have a job. I lost all my friends, like I isolated myself. Going through, uh, getting medication, seeing psychiatrists, um, having therapy, I, I started to feel a little bit better and I started to search for, you know, hey, what else can I do? How else can I make my life better? You know, how, how else can I make myself not feel isolated? And what can I do to give myself a purpose? I searched out Tales of Valor and uh, that's when I met Deal. The Animal Assisted Program through Tales of Valor goes far beyond pairing veterans with service dogs. Uh, our program here actually is creating an opportunity for veterans to be engaged. With Tales of Valor, they use dogs, and the whole process is to provide treatment while the veteran's training the dog to become a service dog. The service dog will actually be on premise at the VA uh, hospital working on site in proximity one-to-one -one with the veteran. Animal assisted therapy is a space where veterans get to feel their feelings and feel like they belong and have a connection. Animals open the doors that people can't. So many times our veterans are deterred away from participating in mental health programs because of the stigma that mental health still creates. So this opportunity allows for them to participate in something that is not only re-establishing their worth and value, but it's also therapeutic. People relate really well with dogs. Here at the VA, we have a lot of veterans who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, 
anxiety, depression. We notice when there's service dogs walking around the VA, a lot of our veterans gravitate to them, light up. Our veterans have a lot of great talents that we can be using in our community. If we can get them engaged and back out there in civilian life, it's gonna be good for everyone. They sat me in a room and Theo came in and uh, it was cool because he came right up, gave me a kiss on the cheek and I was like, oh dude, he's an awesome dog. I, little did I know that he was gonna become my service dog. After uh, I trained with Theo, uh, we grew a bond together. We started living together. He gives me confidence. I go out, he's always by my side. If uh, I'm stressed out, he's always there to comfort me. Anything I can do to help Tales of Valor, I will, because they've done so much for me. We will continue to stay involved in this project. We, we can certainly make a difference, and we can make a difference on a, a local level, a humane level, with some canines. I believe that the dogs are creating change, positive change in our veterans' lives, that they're the core motivating thing that leads to deeper therapy work and healthier lifestyle. To see the changes in some of our veterans, not only in the way that they feel about themselves, but the way that they're connecting with other people. And one of our veterans even said, I haven't felt this loved in 15 years. He's always by my side. I always have a partner. He's a part of my squad. He's a part of my fire team. He's a part of my life. It's nice to have somebody, or a dog, I call him a person, but <laughs> it's nice to have somebody always there. I'm very grateful for it. It's so important to provide this support for our veterans and the animals play such a crucial role. Coming up next, how adaptive bikes are helping kids of all abilities. Stay tuned, this is The Peak. With the help of St. Luke's, kids with limited mobility are getting adaptive bikes and cars so they can ride along with their peers. Check it out. Every child needs to ride a bike. Every child should have that feeling of being able to go through space and just travel down that little bit of a hill. It's just a fun way of mobility. Lehigh Valley Steel Force is a program that is run by therapists and it's a volunteer organization and we provide adaptive bikes or trikes for individuals throughout the Lehigh Valley with diverse abilities. A lot of the children specifically that we're seeing today have been born with some sort of physical deficit or, or something that makes it more difficult for them to have a lot of the same opportunities that a lot of typically developing children have. We're working with kids that might have difficulties using their arms or using their legs or might have difficulty in different, different seating positions. So we're kind of working to give them another opportunity for some independent mobility. All the therapists and, the, and staff at Cindy Miles and Associates are the one who helped to start the adaptive bike program. We've given away over 150 bikes and we're very, very proud of that and we'll continue to give as many bikes as we can. For some kids, they are getting adapted tricycles and we also have kids that are getting cars through the Go Baby Go program. Go Baby Go is a nationally and international program that adapts cars for children to have mobility and we're very excited to be able to partner with St. Luke's as they help us initiate this program for the first time in the Lehigh Valley to be able to give adaptive cars to children for mobility. It really means a lot to me and especially Willie because he was so excited that everyone got together and wanted to make him his custom car and help him make it easier so that when he wants to go outside and play, it's something he can do independently. I want to do the car because I can drive it myself. All of this was completely done on a purely volunteer basis. Working with children, it's, it's very easy to become attached and, and get really, really close to families. So this was a really great opportunity for us and a lot of us were willing to put a lot of time in outside of our regular work week to work on these cars. We have a wonderful staff here and a really wonderful partner within St. Luke's to get this job done. How I feel about the program is how I feel about what we do here every day for the children with therapy, the, the families, the staff, the, what we all do together as a team to allow the children to be the best they can be. We're looking for that that moment within a family that they say this is what our child can do. It can drive. Hey everybody, I'd like to welcome Dr. Elise Jones. She's a pediatrician with St. Luke's University Health Network to the show. Dr. Jones, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Tell me a little bit about pediatrics in St. Luke's and how it's grown over the years. It's really amazing how much this department has expanded. So it really has grown a lot in the last 
few years. Um, I only started with St. Luke's in 2017, and just in the short time that I've been here, there's been a lot of expansion, uh, both on the primary care side as well as the specialty side. Um, so I'm a general pediatrician, so I work in primary care um, at St. Luke's Allentown Pediatrics, but uh, we've had a lot of expansion with our specialty department, which really helps those of us in the primary care side. Um, it's really nice when we can just refer to our own network and it's a lot easier to get patients seen, get them seen in a timely fashion, communicate with our specialists, um, and see all of our all of our notes and everything in the in the electronic record. So it's been a big help. You mentioned specialties and there are over 13 pediatric specialties now at St. Luke's. Why is this so important for not only the convenience, but the care of your patients and their families? It helps us in a lot of ways. It, like you said, a big factor is convenience. So it's nice for families not to have to travel far from where they live to go to their specialty care, which when they don't have to travel far, it's a lot easier for them to keep appointments and get good care. But the other thing is um, from the inpatient side of things and, and keeping all of our care streamlined within the hospital. So we know that if a child does have to get admitted to the hospital, um, that if they ever need specialty care, they can stay in one place, they can get everything they need, they don't have to go elsewhere. And that's really comforting for families to know that they can have all of their care and their communication among their doctors in one place. But also during this time with the pandemic, families have been nervous about getting care for their kids in particular. Why is it so important to keep up with well visits, vaccines, and anything else the child might need uh, as they grow? So as we know, children things can change with children so quickly. Um, generally, for the first two to three years of life, we're seeing kids really frequently, um, every two to six months, depending on the age, because we know how important it is to monitor their growth and development. Um, so we can pick up on any issues, address parents' concerns, and give them their vaccines. So Growth and development are a big part of health, but so are vaccines. And especially in this time with the pandemic, we know that a lot of people have been nervous to come to their doctor's offices. I can reassure everyone that we've made it a safe environment. We feel perfectly safe seeing kids in the office and if they need to go to the hospital, go into the hospital. Um, but be, especially because there was a lot of delay in care because of people's understandable um, concern about coming to the doctor's office, some kids have gotten behind on their vaccines. So that really concerns us as pediatricians that our overall community health and, and immunity in the community to normally vaccine preventable illnesses is going to go down. So we really want to focus on making sure our kids are getting their vaccines, getting them on time so that we can keep their immune systems up. And so that even once we get through this pandemic, we don't have to then worry about preventing or treating things that would have been preventable by vaccines. Well, that's a really good point. It's important for parents and families to know that St. Luke's has taken every precaution and it's really a very safe environment, uh, despite what we're going through with COVID-19. Let me ask you a little bit about the PICU, the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit. Mm -hmm. This is a new addition to St. Luke's. What has that added for families that may need that level of care for their children? And tell us a little bit more about what the PICU is. Yeah, that's a, that's a really great resource for us, and we're really lucky to have had that added um, to our hospital. So um, it's the biggest thing is that we can feel comfortable taking care of basically any level of pediatric care in the hospitals. We can keep them at St. Luke's. They don't have to worry about being transferred. They don't have to worry about the transportation and the risks involved with that. They can stay in the same building, same place, and get their higher level of care. Um, both with their intensivist and the specialist that we mentioned before. How does it make you feel as a pediatrician to know that you're part of a network of pediatric physicians who are able to treat children so comprehensive right here in the Lehigh Valley? Oh, it makes me feel really well supported at St. Luke's. Um, I feel like if there's anything that I need, if there's any resource that I need, I have everything at my disposal. We have, a, I think, a really good level of communication within our department as well. So I feel comfortable talking with any of the other pediatricians, any of the pediatric specialists or hospitalists about a patient of mine. And that is a really valuable thing to feel that level of support. What do you want patients to know out there and families to know about the importance of pediatric care from birth until they are 18 or 21 years old? I know sometimes it might seem 
um, routine or um, unnecessary to see a child so frequently, but it really is an important part of their life and their development and their health. There are things that we can pick up on in an office visit that might not be noticed um, when you're seeing a child every day at home. Um, and there are lots of developmental screenings that we do, things to make sure that every child stays on track, doesn't get behind with their development. Absolutely. We do so many things as parents to uh, put our children's safety and health first. And certainly one of those things should be seeing your pediatrician. So we're so grateful to you and the team at St. Luke's. Thanks for all that you do to keep our kids safe. Thank you very much. Thank you to Dr. Elise Jones for joining us. Stay tuned. This is The Peak. Our community is made up of business leaders, entrepreneurs, and artists. Let's hear from one of our own on why they call the Lehigh Valley home. All right, I am joined here by Dr. Tina Richardson from Penn State Lehigh Valley. Tina, thanks for being with us. It is so good to be here, Ashley. Let's talk a little bit about the Lehigh Valley because as you mentioned, um, you know, you worked here for many years, you've come and gone, you've traveled the world. What makes the Lehigh Valley home for you? What makes it special? The Lehigh Valley is growing. So there are people moving in, there are new opportunities. It's much more vibrant, I think, uh, as a community than what it was when I came in 1991. When you talk to other people and you travel around the world and you, and you say, well, I'm from, you know, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Yes. What do you say to them about what this place is? How do you describe it? Well, one of the things that I always do is I invite people to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And so I have, you know, friends and colleagues that come from uh, other countries, from other continents to visit the Lehigh Valley. I love that so much. So tell me what are some of your favorite things to do here? You get a visitor from out of town. Where do you take them? And you're just enjoying a, a Friday night with friends. Where do you go? So I'm enjoying a Friday night with friends. I, I will spend time at Arts Quest. I love um, the concerts, uh, particularly in the in the summer. Um, the opportunity to hear musicians sometimes that I've never heard of, but are th that are just phenomenal. Um, the opportunity to see the movies, the films that are, are showing there that are not the same ones that you see, um, you know, in the uh, traditional theaters. The opportunities that we have for music festivals. I remember moving here yeah. in 2005, <laughs> yes. and I think there were about three good restaurants they would say yes. to go to. And now you can't get through. You couldn't even get through every great restaurant in the Lehigh Valley in a year if you went out once a week. That's Absolutely. That's how, how good it is. So, yeah, it's awesome. So, And, and then the, the, the people. Um, there are a number of colleges and universities here, and so um, the universities bring a, uh, a community, but then – the industries that are here, the innovation that's here. You know, we, we're sitting in doing a podcast in a, a very innovative space. Yeah. And so the opportunity to see the, the economy grow, to see the population grow, to see, you know, the entertainment outlets um, become, you know, really a rival with many of the other um, cities. Thank you for all that you do at Penn State Lehigh Valley. Thanks Thank for you. joining us on Unscripted. My pleasure. For the full interview, visit youtube.com slash thepeaktv. And don't forget to subscribe to Unscripted with Russo on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. The Lehigh Valley is a beautifully unique place. Let's see why.
I'm so proud to call the Lehigh Valley home so many amazing communities, people, and things to do. To learn about anything on today's show, go to our website at thepeaktv.com. Thanks for watching, and remember, every day is an opportunity to be your best self. This is The Peak. Inclusive bikes for children of all children's. Coming up this week on The Peak, oh no, just kidding, The Peak. <laughs> Let's see why they call the, 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 the. Oh, yep, sorry. <sighs> Support to our veterans and the dog, the dogs. The dogs. <laughs> The Peak TV is a production of ASR Media. Hey, it's Dakota. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos. To see more of The Peak TV, check out our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and catch us on WFMZ Channel 69.